So this weekend, Cam and I are gonna head to Quincy. We've never been before. We're gonna road trip there. We actually saw a listing on cheap old houses for a house in Quincy, and it kind of got us thinking. We had heard a couple things about it from like curbed and stuff, and was always kind of curious about checking it out. But once we started looking into it because of the cheap old houses listing, we just saw that there's so much historic architecture there. So we felt like we wanted to check it out. We're gonna start driving there now, and we're gonna take you along for the ride. Let's go. So Quincy is a four hour drive from Chicago located on the Mississippi River on Bluffs. Quincy was once the second largest city in Illinois behind Chicago and it also has four national historic districts with over 3,500 structures contributing to this. We're really looking forward to seeing all of the historic buildings that Quincy has to offer. So we just arrived in Quincy, checked into our hotel, and now we're heading down Broadway, which leads into downtown. Cam and I are starting our exploration of Quincy in downtown. We're at Washington Park at the square, and Cam really loves historic commercial buildings, so I'm sure he's very excited to take a walk around and see what buildings there are. One of the buildings that really stood out to us in downtown was the Forum Block, which was previously the Rocker National Bank building. This had a lot of ornament in stone, and it was a Second Empire and Renaissance Revival building built back in 1876. And we really liked it because it, it reminded us of a lot of the ornamental buildings in Cincinnati and over the Rhine, if you've been before. Now we're moving on to the 6th Street Promenade. This block reminded us of San Francisco. Like, look at these bay windows. This just amazed me. Guys, I just love this building. It was so creepy cool. Like, their garden in front was amazing, and I, I just can't even imagine what it would look like in summer when everything is blooming and the vines are growing. After spending the weekend in Quincy, the restaurant scene was better than we had anticipated. There was plenty of local options ranging from farm fresh to upscale grocers, Italian, plenty of options, especially for to-go in these times. finished walking through downtown Quincy and it was it was pretty nice it's a very quaint downtown Kim what was your favorite building you think I'd have to say the forum buildings those details are just incredible and you don't really see things like that nowadays so now we're heading to the homes because that's really what we came to Quincy to see they have a huge collection of historic homes we're actually in front of the Quincy Museum right now in the East End District and we can't wait to show you some of them This is 1469 Main Street. It's a French Second Empire home built in 1876. Guys, this house is amazing. It is the most photographed home in Quincy for a reason. I mean, look at it. 
Look at that mansard roof with the decorative slate tiles. They just don't build it like that anymore. We were walking down the street a couple houses down. At 1651 Main, this is an Italianate home built in 1856. I mean, I am just a sucker for Italianate homes that have cupolas. So the East End District did not disappoint. The houses were just absolutely stunning. I couldn't imagine owning a house there. And now we're headed to the Northeast National Historic District. Now this area still needs a little bit of investment, but there are so many gems just waiting to be preserved. This is the Merriam Mansion, built in 1887. It's a Richardsonian Romanesque. Cam and I saw some photos of the interior and the woodwork is exceptional. It was used as apartments at one point. I'm not sure if it still is, but I'd live there. There's just something about this block, like these homes just feel so grand being set up on the hill. It's just amazing. This is 332nd Elm Street. This is an Italianate built in 1868. It's actually currently for sale if you're interested. And we just love it. Now we're spending this afternoon back downtown at the Quincy Post Office. This is a Renaissance revival structure actually built out of limestone in 1885. So what's interesting about this is that the government actually exited this building in 1977 and it was later auctioned and is now a mixed use building and they say it's underutilized. Plant paws! Oh my gosh, wait, I just got so distracted. Look at this Monstera plant. I actually asked Cam, like, why doesn't our Monstera plant look like this? So we ended evening one downtown and kind of stumbled upon this building glistening in the sunset and it's just absolutely amazing, that glazed terracotta. Here we are, day two, looking forward to checking out the other two National Historic Districts in Quincy. We're back in the East End, and this is 2020 Main Street. It's a colonial revival built in 1904. And even though we're a sucker for brick homes, this is a siding home and it is absolutely stunning. Now we're taking a walk around the local historic district called Park Place. And something that's actually interesting about it is all of the homes were built at the same time. They were required to be at least $3,000, two stories, and brick. So a lot of them are Queen Anne, but there's a couple prairie styles mixed in there, but the block looks very cohesive because of these rules set in place. <laughs>
Hey guys, this is definitely my favorite house in Quincy. It is just so wonderfully preserved and I just love all of the detail. It's kind of like a brick gingerbread. So the proper term for this house is, it is an Italianate with East Lake detailing. It was actually moved from its original location about three years after it was built and they added on this Queen Anne wraparound porch. It's located at 205 South 16th Street and it was built in 1878. And this is Cam's favorite house of Quincy, which is located in the Southside German Historic District at 1118 State Street. This is listed as a commercial building and it's currently used as apartments, but the history is unknown. My best guess is that it's a Renaissance revival, but if you know anything about its history, leave a comment below for us. That's a wrap on Quincy. We were able to see so many historic homes. The amount did not disappoint. We'd definitely come back again in the future. So we're gonna wrap up the video here. We finished our weekend away and you know, this is our first YouTube video. We're hoping to make this a series and spotlight some of the smaller historic towns in the Midwest. If you have any cities that you want us to look at, please let us know in a comment below, but we hope you liked the video and we hope you look forward to seeing more of them. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed what you saw and we'll see you in the next one.